come here. Hey, I'm Sapphire. Want to hear something scary? Before we head into our next chapter, make sure you subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. This next story comes from Zen in Colorado, who had a close encounter with a dangerous creature you may have heard of. When Zen was around six years old, she lived deep in the mountains of Colorado. Her family had no internet and no cell phone coverage. They lived in isolation from the rest of the world and liked it that way. Zen spent most of her days outside playing in the forest that surrounded her house. Her only company up there was her two huge St. Bernards. One day, Zen was playing in the forest with her dogs. She realized she wandered a little too far when she looked behind her and couldn't see her house anymore. She found herself in a clearing where there were piles of strange sticks strewn around. Little did Zen know at the time that they weren't sticks at all. She looked up. Huge rain clouds had started to form and the wind picked up speed. A storm was coming and she needed to get back inside. Zen started to head in the direction that she thought was home. With every step, the wind's power increased. The leaves from the trees were swirling around her and little droplets of rain sprinkled on top of her. She walked for what seemed like forever. And then she heard it, rustling in the trees. It was coming from the trees in front of her. Zen became super uneasy. She felt like someone was watching her. Then her dogs started to growl and bark. They stood in front of her, protecting her. A twig snapped and her dogs lost it. She had never seen them act this way. Then a voice called out from the trees. It was her mother's. Zenny, the voice said. Zenny, mom? Zen wanted to be comforted by this. She should have been comforted by this, but she couldn't. That was her nickname and that was her mother's voice, but it sounded off. It's like when you pull on a record and the words are slow and mumbled. Come here, the voice shouted again. That was definitely not Zen's mother. She began to run, her dogs barking the entire way. But she stopped when she saw those familiar sticks. She had run the wrong way. Zenny, Zenny, come here, Zenny, come here, Zenny, 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 come here. The voice had followed her. She took off in the other direction, not stopping for a second until finally, her house. She ran inside and after she caught her breath, told her mother what happened. She assured her that it was probably just the wind howling in the trees and nothing more. It wasn't until years later, after Zen and her family had moved from that house, that Zen decided to ask her mother about that day. Mom, do you remember our old house and that day when I heard your voice in the forest? Oh, yeah. Her brow furrowed as she contemplated her next words. I guess you're old enough now to know the truth. The truth about what? When you told me about the voices in the trees, I didn't want to scare you at the time because you were so young. That house was on Native American land. I called a medicine man to come and cleanse our house and property. When I told him your story, he said that you were very lucky to be alive. You had narrowly escaped a Wendigo. A Wendigo is a demonic spirit that possesses humans and turns them into cannibals. They have an insatiable hunger for human flesh and will stop at nothing to get it. Wendigos are vicious, but also very cunning and tricky. With their heightened sense of hearing, they can pick up the panicked heartbeat of a lost human from miles away. Then, with their long legs and supernatural speed, they run over to their prey and begin their twisted game. Sometimes, they taunt their victims with their deep growls. Other times, they'll mimic human voices of loved ones to trick you into coming closer. Come here. According to legend, a Wendigo is nearly impossible to escape. Once it's made you its target, you're as good as dead. To this day, Zen still can't believe that she is one of the lucky few to have escaped the clutches of a Wendigo. Thank you to Zen for sharing this encounter with us. And another special thank you to Bailey Jenkins Franklin for your support of the show. I really appreciate it. 
So, do you think that was really a Wendigo that was hunting Zen? Let me know in the comments. Like this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and our sister channels Hissy Fit and Slay Tricks. If you or anyone you know have any unique paranormal experiences, send me an email at somethingscary@snarled.com, and I might animate your story. Even if it doesn't fit in with the current theme, it might fit one in the future. And if your story doesn't make it into an episode, tune into my weekly live stream every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I might read it live. If you dare, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, sweet dreams.